morning. So I hope uh, you guys wrote Isra's Festival. Okay, so today we're going to discuss about uh, you know the chapter evolution and uh, you see botany again you got ecosystem today so ecosystem we already discussed right so regarding ecosystem you have uh, full length uh, one minute so you have got full length uh, class videos on ecosystem so you can access those uh, videos, that playlist, okay? And you can. So I know uh, if, if you guys were in school, right? You you guys. Sorry. So you can uh, get those videos also. So regarding ecosystem. So today we will be discussing uh, only one chapter. So regarding ecosystem, you can go visit the ecosystem chapter that is uh, 12th CBSC ecosystem full full length chapters and outline. There is a uh, there is a playlist over there, so that you can uh, that you can uh, that you can get actually. Okay, I will share that link as well so that it will be helpful for you. Yeah. So if you if you click on this uh, link, even you can find remaining uh, videos. It will be continuously will be there. Four parts are there. Fifth part have to be updated. It means last uh, uh, ecological succession etc. would be discussed in that part. That would be uh, it will be soon. It will be updated. Okay. Meanwhile, you can open that link and you can go through those all four parts of ecosystem. Okay. So today, anyhow, you have to revise ecosystem so you can view those videos. Or it's up to you. You can just uh, go through the textbook as well okay let's start with today's lesson that is uh, evolution yeah so evolution uh, can someone define evolution what is evolution only one question i will be asking what is evolution if you know that concept behind the evolution because you already wrote exams etc so you should be perfectly answering this question so what is what is what is an evolution what is it what does it mean actually so since it's only one lesson we'll end this session soon also so that uh, you can prepare well Evolution is a change in gene pool of the gene population. Okay. 
what else we can understand by the term evolution? So, Shanmati saying evolution is a change in gene pool. Okay. So, we talk about this evolution. It's an, uh, if you see this, this is an, uh, uh, right? Now, uh, change what exactly changing what all the evolutionary forces etc will be uh, discussed uh, in this video so let's see further okay when it comes to evolution right uh, it is an orderly change from one form to another so in in this uh, evolution we we already talked about uh, you know during academics academic uh, academic sessions we already talked about uh, you know what is the, uh, you know, how the first cell is formed you know organic uh, you know how this organic evolution took place and how that actually paved path to evolving evolution of life forms right so these are the uh, uh, things we already discussed so let's have a quick recap or quick uh, outline of this entire lesson so when we talk about evolution, we talk about the life forms, variety of life forms and their origin also. So first, before we really understand the, uh, you know, variety of the life forms created here, we need to understand how the life is origin. So for that matter, we need to know even how universe is origin, right? So how the universe was origin at that point of time. Uh, we uh, believe in this uh, Big Bang theory, right, which states that the universe originated about 20 million years ago, right, with a single huge explosion. So, so, so there is a huge explosion and then right from then, the universe is expanding, right. And if you see the Earth, Earth is formed around uh, 4.5 billion years ago, but there are other connotations or other theories, right. Uh, theories of special creation or other theories will suggest that the earth is just 2000 years old or 3000 years old. So the, those are all ruled out actually. So uh, we will be talking about uh, even the theories of origin of the life as well. So this is how the first the origin of universe has happened and then origin of earth which is 4.0 billion years ago. And the earth if you see right now what you see is a very different earth. It means uh, at that point of time, the earth is primitive, actually. Good morning, Saigon. So, earth is primitive. So, primitive earth conditions are very different. The atmosphere and uh, the temperatures, right? All those things are very, very much different from right now what we see, right? So, if you see those uh, in this neat aspect, the primitive earth conditions are, uh, for example, the temperature, right so all those things are important the numbers okay so especially the uv radiation is too much at the same time the inorganic molecules and elements that point of time which were there like h2 and o2 and then uv uh, you know uh, you know uv light which actually acted upon this h2o to break them into h2 and o2 and then this oxygen combined with uh, you know ammonia or methane uh, to form water and CO2 again. So in this way, what happened is the gaseous and other atmosphere atmosphere was created. So the primitive earth conditions may be asked in uh, in the form of correct or incorrect statement. So you should not go wrong in those aspects. Okay. Uh, when come to origin of life, right? Theories. When we talk about theories, there are different theories. So I do explain, uh, you know, this origin of theories, and it's more interesting, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, topic in this lesson. So when we talk about our theories, right? There are there was there were different types of theories actually. So we have got uh, abiogenesis theory, spontaneous generation theory, biogenesis theory, right? Cosmic theory theory of special creation so here you see the theory of spontaneous generation theory or abiogenesis theory it states that the life is origin from inanimate or rotting matter uh, rotting rotting matter like straw or mud 
means we of the life is origin from dead and decaying matter so how far it is true and how far in people is to believe in this uh, spontaneous generation theory until or unless uh, until uh, louis pasteur right he disproved this theory by series of experimental experiments and demonstrate uh, demonst demonstrations right so he uh, he he proved that or he demonstrated that the life is origin from pre-existing cell not the dead tissue or inanimate objects so according to this theory i will uh, all this series will be much uh, detailed discussed in the next type of videos there is detailed discussion on each chapter so this is just an outline so i'll quickly go through the important aspects so the louis pasteur its experiments his experiment and what he proved and what he disproved so this this is how you have to make a table as simple as that and then comes to biogenesis uh, again uh, which is pro which is proposed by francisco rede and the Spalang spalangini and louis pasteur who actually uh, you know in the lines of disproving the spontaneous generation theory so they all uh, believed that or they proved that uh, or they stated that the life origin is from pre existing life so there should be all already a life should be existing to actually you know give birth or give rise to one more cell or another life form right so they conducted series of experiments uh, to support their work as well and to disprove the spontaneous generation theory and then cosmic theory or theory of pan spermia pan everywhere spermia sperm in the sense here we talk about the seeds so they used to believe that the seeds from uh, you know transfer from other planets right so this uh, life the units of life we call it as spores were transferred to different planets including earth from nowhere or somewhere uh, uh, you know outside the earth so they have reached from outer space to the earth or different planets this spores or uh, we we call this theory as panspermia so this is a very popular theory but even aristotle used to believe in this right even still few people believe in this theory but there is no evidence much evidence on this at the same time uh, the next theory is theory of special creation which speaks of which which states that living and non living uh, creates creatures were created by some supernatural power so they it believes in god actually so god has created this living and uh, non living matter on the universe or earth is what theory of special creation states so these are the different theories of uh, uh, origin of life so you will be getting call me a call me origin of life theories and the who stated it so you need to match uh, match uh, accordingly Good morning shamili okay and then so how do we uh, when we talk about the next next theory that is uh, a recent theory or modern theory we, which states uh, nothing but the chemical evolution theory of chemical evolution hopperin and halden which actually they come up with uh, you know a theory which states that the you know this uh, life originated from like non living inorganic and organic molecules so whenever i take this cell as an i used to explain that right, atoms combine to form simpler molecules combine to form complex molecules combine to form cell organelles combine to form cell that's how the life has origin in, in according to this theory chemical evolution first this uh, elements and then uh, inorganic molecules are formed these inorganic molecules and uh, organic molecules uh, entered into the you know a cell like structure very primitive cell like structure at that point of time and then it started replicating and then that's how the life started right so here uh, it, it suggests that abiogenesis is first but biogenesis is ever since the statement is important here abiogenesis first but bio biogenesis ever since it means that first if you see this origin of life first abiogenesis occurred and then uh, abiogenesis means the origin of life a life form from non living matter so according to abiogenesis right the first cell so if you if you can uh, if you can understand by taking three cells 
first cell, second cell, and third cell, right? You can put it in a put it on a paper right now. Then it will be uh, very clear for you guys. Okay. So what you can do is you can take a paper, and what you can do is you can just put three rounds. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. And name it as one, two, three. Okay, like this. So one, two, three. Okay. So we are talking about first cell. So spontaneous generation theory or this abiogenesis theory, which actually states is averse. Spontaneous generation theory states that the uh, life origin from inanimate objects or non-living matter. But actually, that was disproved by Louis Pasteur. But Louis Pasteur and others didn't explain how first cell formed. Even uh, uh, Rudolf Virchow, who gave this cell theory, stating that the cells origin from pre-existing cells, and he has no clue about how the first cell is formed. Right. So how the first cell was formed was not. There was no clue. But according to this theory of chemical evolution, it explains the formation of cell theory, uh, This uh, first cell. So if you see this one, two, three cells. So this first cell is there, right? So this first cell to form, you have uh, some. Uh, a simple molecules, inorganic and or organic molecules. So these are inorganic or organic molecules, you know, absorbed by this cell-like structure. So uh, this lipid membrane, uh, membrane structures are there, and then finally it formed a primitive cell first. So this is something abiogenesis. There is no living form right here uh, to form the first cell. The first cell is formed based upon abiogenesis, but it happened only once. So entire universe only once the abiogenesis is occurred and later on what the second cell right so the second cell origin based upon the first cell replication and the third cell and fourth cell likewise creation of life forms we humans so we are all back in time connected to this guy our ancestral cell that's what the statement abiogenesis first and and uh, but biogenesis ever since clear uh, is this understood? This is a key aspect where many people will not get this point. Maybe we would have ra uh, read the evolution chapter many times or uh, somewhere in the education, our uh, schooling or college, but uh, people may not get this uh, concept right. So, so you can. Uh, uh, who who heard this for, for the first time? You can respond in comments also. You haven't heard about this. That is abiogenesis. So only once the abiogenesis is occurred, it means the first cell is formed based upon inorganic and organic molecules. Once the first cell is formed, later on, from the second cell, biogenesis occurred. It means from the second cell, the second cell is formed from pre-existing first cell. But for, to form first cell, there is no pre-existing life. Right, so first life form the first cell, yeah. Sai Karna, first time, yeah. Thank you, thank you for your response. So, this is how the second cell form, and third, fourth, fifth, and then once the life is created by replication, right? That's what in life forms, life characteristics will be studying in botany first lesson, right? So, at that point of time, you will understand uh, what are the different uh, characteristics of life. So, it needs to be replicated. Right, so this is how this replication takes place, and this organic molecules like uh, you know DNA, uh, you know first RNA is formed RNA molecule, and because of its instability, unstability, then later it formed a stable forms, a uh, DNA, and then finally replicated to form uh, life forms, uh, nothing but prokaryotes, and then this prokaryotes, there is unifying principle or endo uh, endosymbiotic theory. It means formation of endosymbiotic theory explains the formation of first eukaryotic cell so this eukaryotic cell is otherwise called as cell within cell it means if you see any eukaryotic cell you will be finding semi autonomous bodies you know semi autonomous bodies in the sense like uh, uh, for example chloroplast and mitochondria are semi semi autonomous autonomous or something which uh, which uh, they can do their functions without depending upon anything but if you see in any cell, the entire cell activities are actually controlled by nucleus. But when it comes to mitochondria and chloroplast, they have their own uh, genome. So mitochondrial uh, DNA or mitochondrial genome is uh, separate from the nuclear DNA. 
especially uh, you know mitochondria that we have we possess in our body each cell right those are all mitochondria came from from our mothers from the from the maternal cells nothing but the ovum eggs not from the sperm so typically any uh, disorders associated with mitochondrial uh, genome or disorders they are all uh, given or gifted by our mother cells as simple as that because the mitochondria will not be possessed or will not be carried right uh, uh, from the sperm to the ovum it would be only the, the nuclear material would actually eventually uh, taken up and uh, definite and then forms the zygote so the mitochondria what we see is something which is uh, maternal so likewise this first eukaryotic cell formation explained by endosymbiotic theory and so fascinating actually that theory so two prokaryotic cells maternal inheritance yeah exactly uh, mitochondrial inheritance or maternal inheritance we can say so uh, this uh, prokaryotic cell and this primitive cell is fused endosymbiosis taken up and then they started producing energy and few cells started becoming a uh, you know self sustaining systems nothing but autotrophs right so uh, which which they can actually prepare their own food so likewise this uh, life forms were created after million billion years uh, you know uh, of uh, evolution right so that's how uh, these theories are very much important when it comes to evolution a very fascinating theory and uh, uh, when it comes to this theory of chemical evolution, it explains the first cell formation in the sense like how these inorganic and organic molecules are actually, uh, you know, uh, 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 which, uh, for, for example, uh, sugars, proteins, nucleic acid, etc., or methane, ammonia, H2O, all these inorganic and organic molecules, how they made this first cell is what they explain in chemical evolution. Okay. But uh, Rudolf Wittkow and uh, Louis Pasteur, Spallagnini, all these guys are not having any idea of how the first cell is first formed. And then this to prove or to support this chemical evolution, we have got uh, Uri, Miller, uh, Uri Miller experiment as well. So this Uri Miller experiment, uh, when we talk about um, Stanley Miller or Uri Miller experiment, uh, is, it's a simulation kind of thing, simulation in the sense like we will be creating the same earth conditions at that point of time in organic or <laughs> in organic molecules what we have at the same time the spark chamber spark tungsten uh, electrodes would be uh, given to give the you know uh, this uh, what is a uh, which which gives uh, you know uh, uh, which which eventually splits split these molecules or combines these molecules which actually uh, and uh, simulation or uh, in equivalent to the uh, what do you say this lightening uh, of that that time because when earth is formed right when earth was formed right when primitive earth condition when you take the primitive earth conditions there are huge thunder storms for even years 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 together not one day or two day one month or two months yes so that's why we see a lot of uh, we see the deep depressions for uh, you know filled up with oceans at that point of time there are thunder uh, storms and uh, thunder that would be actually uh, replaced by uh, this uh, spark uh, discharge tungsten electrodes in this miller's experiment so that we are creating uh, this miller and yuri created the primitive earth conditions and finally they are able to produce organic molecules like this uh, like uh, pigments and other amino acids and sugars so that's how they proved that uh, this chemical evolution occurred at the same time uh, uh, they created these primitive earth conditions within a laboratory setup so let's move to the next aspect that is evidence for evolution are you able to follow guys so let's quickly move so when it comes to evidences for evolution so we are saying, yeah, so once the first cell is formed and the second cell uh, formed from pre-existing cell and then like that uh, life forms originated, it means variation. So we talk about different variations of so how these humans are so different from uh, other animals, different from plants, plants different from microbes, microbes different from other living organisms. How this variation is created and how can we really prove that, yes, this is, this is because of, this was happened because of the 
uh, evaluation itself. So for that, we need to prove it some evidences. So we have got some evidences like paleontology, uh, paleontological evidences. We have got uh, uh, which are nothing but the fossil evidences, right? So so based upon the fossils, we will uh, try to you know uh, now uh, we can we, these fossils are the documents of evolution. It means they are the real proofs for the evolution. It's not that uh, it's my it's not my it's not just sharing an opinion. We need a solid evidences. So this uh, paleontology or uh, very much uh, useful or they were uh, you know written documents of evolution. So the statement is important. Okay, and then uh, we can find out the connecting links between the extinct uh, species and with the existing species. So we can uh, we can really figure out uh, what are the different varieties we have created and uh, with uh, what made their uh, extinct uh, extinction at the same. Uh, uh, what made them extinct at the same time we can understand how the life has been changing since ever right and then we talk about the morphological and anatomical uh, evidences we have got molecular evidences we have got embryological evidences right so like that we will talk about different evidences also so when you talk about morphological evidences we have got homologous and analogous uh, organs uh, so, uh, if you see this homologous and uh, analogous organ, uh, you know, we will be comparing, uh, you know, for example, human hand and uh, whale flippers. But if you see this, there would be an homology. So, uh, what exactly this homo homology is nothing but, you know, <coughs> they are fundamentally similar in their structure, right, and origin. So, there will be, you know, uh, if you take mammals, they are they will be having similar structure, right? Uh, the bones, if you see, arrangement of bones would be the same like bat and human, right? But human uses this limbs for different purpose. Functions would be different, and the bat would use for flying. So that's the difference. So so there would be a difference in functions. And analogy is different. Analogy is opposite to it. It means uh, if you take this uh, analogous organs, these are the organs uh, having similar function but different structure and origin. So they will be having similar function, right? Wings of insects and uh, and wings of birds. So wings of insects, insects is class insecta, and if you see this uh, birds, they belongs to apes, right? Uh, this there are there are they are originally they are both are different, but they are performing same function that is flight so likewise the examples of this uh, homologous from uh, homologous uh, sorry homologous organs and uh, uh, analogous organs and the divergent evolution and their examples also very much important what exactly the divergent evolution convergent evolution again the divergent evolution takes place in uh, uh, this uh, you know how this uh, homologous orga, uh, organs are origin by the divergent evolution and analogous organs are origin from the convergent evolution. So divergent is something which has, uh, you know, same uh, structure and origin but different function. But when it comes to analogous organs or convergent evolution, they have similar function but their structure and origin are very much different. So like that, examples are important right? when it comes to homologous and analogous. Definitely you will go wrong if you don't prepare well for this. You have to take animal examples and plant examples. I am already given in worksheet, so please do follow. And then next one is adaptive radiation. So adaptive radiation, when we talk about adaptive radiation, we have adaptive convergence and adaptive divergence. So adaptive convergence is that uh, when there is an, uh, more than one adaptive radiation within the same geographical area, so we call it as adaptive convergence and we have got different examples I have already given in the uh, worksheet also, please go. So differences between marsupials and uh, you know Australian marsupials and placental mammals in Australia, you need to get it right. So those differences uh, and the examples are also very much important. So next coming to the biological evidences, uh, biochemical evidences, if you see the biochemical evidences like if you take the uh, proteins and genes, you will be finding these proteins and genes in uh, over uh, different organisms as a, it's almost the same uh, kind of a, you know, arrangement or processes.
yeah so that's what the, this biochemical uh, or molecular molecular biology evidences right like dna and the genetic code right the genes and metabolisms and biomolecules you know they uh, we can uh, uh, we can really relate to our uh, ancestors if you can see this ancestral metabolisms we are particularly we are carrying this uh, metabolism and this type of uh, digestion or etc you see even in ancestors also that's how we can even connect or these are all the evidences next speaking embryological evidences ernest heckel actually uh, explained this embryological evidences so in all vertebrates right uh, all vertebrate embryos at one stage they look alike actually they they share uh, you know uh, vestigial uh, gill slits uh, just behind the earth uh, you know Uh, head, but it's functional only in fish. And later, uh, when the embryo is developing, right? So those are all uh, become uh, rudimentary, or they have developed into some other structures, as simple as that. So which which means that uh, it is these embryos never pass through the adult stages of their other animals. It means once this embryo only certain embryological uh, embryological uh, stage only, our all vertebrates would resemble the same. But once they are, uh, you know. You know, uh, growing and they are developing. They never pass this characters to the other adults. Adult animals, you can't see this. In adult stages, you can't see all this uh, characters that were displayed in embryonic uh, stages. So this is one of the evidence. Next one is evidences for evolution by natural selection. So when we talk about natural selection, this industrial mechanism. Uh, I have shown the real pictures of industrial mechanism where my one of my friend went to London, and I have shown those images also, right? How this? Uh, uh, I mean, the London Museum they were uh, preserved that uh, that uh, you know that experiments, and I have shown uh, in class as well actually. So dark wing moth and white wing moth, how they are actually naturally selected, uh, how this become an evidence for evolution. These examples are very much important. right so uh, white uh, white uh, white color moths white wing moths can be exposed when there is a dark background so this dark background was created by the you know lichens on the uh, lichens on the bark of the trees when they are getting affected by the industrial pollution so before industrialization they were light and uh, light the barks were light because lichens are alive once industrialization takes place post industrialization because of the pollution the lichens are uh, or somehow we we say that uh, they are uh, you know measures you uh, know they are uh, you know we can say that they are uh, we can measure the pollution based upon the lichen uh, uh, lichens so uh, right so this lichens whether they live they are living or they are affected uh, we can actually you know measure based upon the lichens uh, you know pollution measure right so in the over polluted areas you can see this lichens will be getting very much affected so once the industrialization takes place the black soot you know eventually really and uh, affected this lichens and then they are dead and then uh, you found the black black or black dark background so when the dark background is there so obviously if you consider this is uh, dark and the white color moths would be used to be exposed in this way so obviously the predator would uh, take over this white color white wing moths right so now what happened is the dark wing moths now they can mix with the background so they are safe so that's how the back black wing moth got uh, naturally selected after the industrialization so these examples are very important and the natural selection by anthropogenic action here the term anthropogenic action is meant anthropogenic is nothing but human intervention okay like herbicides pesticides antibiotics or drugs so now we are using different antibiotics penicillin we use now the all most of the microorganisms uh, microbes they got uh, resistance to penicillin penicillin is no more useful now we are creating a uh, different antibiotics so likewise we developed uh, man made or man developed uh, you know uh, you know different uh, you know herbicides or pesticides or antibiotics and drugs they are comes under anthropogenic action so these are all uh, evidences for uh, evolution 
so natural selection based upon the anthropogenic action so finally we will be talking about the next aspect is series of biological evolution so there, there were different periods of uh, biological evolution how this uh, uh, variety was created to explain we have lamarckism darwinism neo darwinism etc so i gave everything very clearly in your uh, out, uh, outline of the worksheet so you can uh, go through when i post it. so lamarckism or theory of inheritance of acquired characteristics if you take in acquired uh, characteristics of lamarckism right evolution by use of organs evolution by disuse so this is how the characters when the traits or characteristics of an organism are selected naturally by their use and they are not selected by their disuse this is what lamarckism suggests but this theory was eliminated out because it is provided that characters are inherited only through genes so this is what they didn't explain the other uh, factors but this theory only uh, you know uh, you know uh, because it is proved that you know the characters were actually displayed by the you know inherited only through the genes once we understand the traits or characters which we are expressing right now is through genes so this lamarckism is uh, eliminated it means uh, because of the use and disuse so if you are using one hand uh, more and more and more and more and more we can't develop one more hand or we can't just develop only one 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 strong hand strong hand so this misconceptions at the same time were disproved i mean they are eliminated once once they understood by this mendel's work or other works that the genes the we, we acquire or we inherit characters based upon the genes and then uh, comes to the darwinism that is uh, uh, darwinism talks about theory of natural selection right and lamarckism uh, talks about the theory of inheritance of acquired characteristics like uh, so uh, in darwin explained uh, this hms beagle uh, uh, no beagle the voyage set to the different uh, islands and he observed that finches darwin finches examples and the beaks type of beaks and their uh, adaptive radiation all these things divergent uh, evolution you need to focus on so you have different uh, terminology there uh, here uh, we are talking about that is branching descendant natural selection you know heritable minor variation so he talked about different uh, so even you you'll be uh, comparing uh, when it comes to uh, this uh, theories of uh, biological evolution you'll be comparing uh, darwinism uh, you know when when it comes to uh, darwinism at the same time uh, hugo de veres right hugo de veres mutation theory of evolution and darwin variation so these two comparisons and their statements and their correct or incorrect statements are very important when it comes to neat exam so survival of fittest is given by darwin at the same time he talked about uh, uh, you know limited natural resources struggle for existence survival of fittest these are all theories were talked uh, you know given by darwinism in the darwinism and then when we talk about mechanism of evolution Hugo de Veres explained this mechanism of evolution by mutation theory, single step, large mutation, saltation process, and how it is different from Darwin uh, idea of evolution, where uh, Darwin said that it is a minor, slow, directional, right? Uh, so uh, how these uh, these two are different, and the mutation theory is also very much important when when we talk about mechanisms of evolution. and then comes the very important aspect in the lesson that is ardi weinberg principle and the related uh, problems so in academics and neat uh, classes i already discussed about the different uh, problems in this uh, ardi weinberg equilibrium it just as an uh, you know uh, uh, what is a it's a uh, uh, what is a it's a simple uh, you know equation right uh, algebraic equation if you see this a plus b whole square so in the same way if we take this characteristics p plus b p plus q p plus q whole square so that's what we uh, we you know we try to understand uh, you know whether a certain given population is undergoing evolution or not if the evolution is taking place this ardi weinberg equilibrium will not be taking place 
So based upon if the some population is in Hardy member equilibrium, if they if that population is satisfying uh, Hardy member equilibrium, it means they are not evolving. So that's how we see that well, we understand whether the population is evolving uh, population or not evolve non evolving. Like that, RD Weinberg equilibrium would be affected by different factors like gene migration. I already explained the five, uh, you know, you know, five fingers of evolution. That is Paul Anderson. Uh, I wanted to credit uh, his work. Paul Anderson, in one of his TED talks, used this uh, five fingers of evolution, and it's, I'm very fascinated about his videos and uh, you know the way he lectures. And the analogy and the type of uh, you know approach he has towards the students on the subject, and he is really an inspiration to me. And if you see this five fingers of uh, uh, evolution, I've already explained about uh, you know uh, you know shrinking shrink in the population, population size shrink. At the same time, you have got uh, uh, you know gene uh, you know uh, when it comes to non-random mat mating mutations. Right and migration, and then finally we talked about uh, you know uh, natural selection. So this all these five factors, how they are affecting the uh, equilibrium, and when we talk about natural selection, there uh, stabilizing selection, directional selection, disruptive selections, and their examples and their graphs are utmost prime importance in NEET exam. Should not omit. Okay, so each what is gene migration, what is genetic drift, all these concepts I will be discussing in a more detailed manner in other type of videos. Okay, full length video I will be taking up soon. I will be sharing that with you. So this genetic drift, uh, you know, their uh, what do you say, their uh, definitions and their uh, what do you, uh, definitions and uh, whether they are incorrect or correct statements, they will be asked. And then comes the brief account of evolution. So here the eras, uh, I gave few mnemonics. So there are different eras. We are there: Proterozoic, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, right? The so different eras, and the Cenozoic, where now we are there in the Cenozoic age uh, era, where this is the age of mammals and angiosperms. So whenever you get age of dominant species, dominated. During this period, when you when you observe this point type of terms in this uh, brief account of uh, evolution, right? Brief of brief a brief account of uh, you know evolution, you should be definitely stopping there and you should be practicing. So age of mammals and angiosperms, which era? So this might be one question: Cenozoica, Protozoica, Paleozoica, Mesozoica. So you should be able to identify. So which species or which type of uh, you know species had dominated uh, at that point that kind of a period right so uh, dinosaurs dominated which species got extinct which species now dominating those are all the things you need to really focus on in this and the and the diagram which were given in the ncrt are utmost important the charts right so in which period uh, you can see even the diagrammatic representation of the uh, dominance, right? So thick lines suggest they are dominant over a period, and even whether they are evolving or they are not evolving, also you should be remembering. And finally, comes to the origin of evil, origin and evolution of man. I, I have already given a mnemonic. So when it comes to the mnemonics of uh, this, uh, uh, you know, evolution, I already made few videos on, uh, you know, evolution. Okay. So when I talk about uh, evolution, uh, what do you say? <laughs> so when we talk about evolution and uh, mnemonics, I'll be sharing one link. You can go through that uh, evolution mnemonics, especially. Uh, So especially this human evolution, I have, uh, I have made a video on uh, mnemonics. So you please go through, I am just sharing the link as well. So in human evolution, we'll be talking about uh, their origin and the uh, Dryan Pithecus, Raman Pithecus, their uh, how many million years ago their origin. 15 million years ago to right now, what is the, uh, you know, right now what species are dominating within the, you know, humans, that's uh, Homo sapiens, sapiens, modern human. 
and agricultural development 10000 years ago and what are the other aspects uh, k watt when it was developed 18000 years ago and homo habilis their cranial capacity so all these things mnemonics have already gave in uh, this video i mean the link i have shared right so you can go access that so that you can use it for yours so with this we completed this lesson i hope you and uh, you know this uh, quick outline would be useful for you and uh, thank you for uh, uh, coming live and interacting and uh, uh, please do subscribe and uh, share this videos to your friends and uh, whoever interested in biology and please leave a feedback as well and thank you for coming uh, coming for live and participating and uh, and uh, making this uh, you know interaction good so i'm um, yeah okay thank you guys meet you in the next video thank you